Let us continue with our same chapter, the last leopard. In our last class, you heard that when Martin reached Zimbabwe, she could find the hills of Matapos stretching all around her. She couldn't find anything much there. The only thing moving there was the tired horses and the tired horses at the bottom of the mountain and a small rat-like animal which is a favorite food of leopards sniffing along the base of the cave. When it got a company, it moved away. Martin then went to examine the paintings in the cave. She never got tired of looking at cave pictures. She found those pictures fascinating and thrilling. Those sketches were well preserved. Their colors had remained for thousands of years without damage. The pictures were of the usual scenes of hunts, feasts and ceremonies, but she was surprised to find that there were quite a lot of similarities between these pictures and those in memory room cave at Saubona. They were almost the work of the same artist. One image was drawn slightly apart. She moved to look at it. It was the painting of a girl standing at the entrance to a cave, the same cave where she was in, and crouched on the pillar, there was a leopard about to pounce, and that was the same leopard which she had seen in the sand. Now let us continue with our current page. Martin froze. What if she was the girl in the picture? What if the leopard? She smelt him before she, she saw him. It wasn't an unpleasant smell, if anything. There was something wonderful about it. It was the scent of a wild, free thing, but it was also the smell of a killer. At Saubona, Martin had rehearsed this moment a hundred times in case she was ever confronted by a predator when out riding Jimmy. But in her imagination, she had always been able to gallop away on the white giraffe. Now she was alone. She dragged her eyes upwards. The leopard was on the ledge above her, regal both in stature and in size. His creamy gold coat had the rich sheen of the finest silk. His black spots gleamed and his yellow eyes blazed like topaz fires. She had always admired leopards in photographs, always wanted to see an adult one in real life. Her glimpse of the rescued leopard cubs at Saubona had been brief because Tendai had been anxious to return them to their mother. But nothing would have prepared her for the unquenchable spirit of Khan in the flesh. Power and wilderness radiated from him. So when Martin saw the leopard, she got frightened. She could feel his presence and could even sense the smell of a killer. Before she had rehearsed many times how to behave if she ever caught a leopard while riding on her white giraffe, Jemmy. But here, in the cave, she was alone and had no way to escape. Here, Martin is confronting Khan, the legendary leopard, the killer Khan, in the cave. It was sitting on the ledge about to pounce on her. She had always admired leopards and wanted to see an adult leopard. Once she happened to see rescued leopard cubs, but they were soon returned to their mother. With one bound, he smashed her to the earth. His great paws thudded against her chest and his claws pierced her skin and then she was on the ground, panting and in pain. She could feel blood trickling down her armpit. Khan stood over her, his huge paws on either side of her body. The look in his eyes was one of pure fury and hatred. She knew he would kill her without a care. He gave a savage snarl and his whiskered lips curled back over pink gums. His teeth were so close to her throat that Martin could feel his hot breath on her face. Yell and will come running. Ben had promised. But she had she would be dead long before he could get her 
to her and Khan would probably die too because in spite of his uh, clan oath, their guide Venya wouldn't hesitate to shoot the leopard and try to save her. So, Khan stood over Martin with his huge paws on either side of her body. She knew he would kill her. He roared angrily. She then remembered Ben telling her, Shout and we will come running if you confront Khan. But she knew that she would be, she would be dead before Ben arrived and Khan too would be killed by the guide. Twice in the past, Martin's gift had allowed her to halt a deadly attack. Once when a Rottweiler dog had tried, tried to stop her from rescuing Jimmy and another time when a great white shark was on the verge of eating an American tourist. But that had required concentration and a supreme effort of will and now she was so frightened she was incapable of summoning either of those things. She lay on the ground like a blob of jelly and yet she couldn't hate the leopard for what he was about to do to her. There were very good reasons for his loathing of humans. She understood that he was afraid himself. But there was something else in his yellow eyes, something besides hatred and fear. There was sadness and tiredness that seemed bone deep as if he was exhausted by the endless struggle to survive. And it was those things that made Martin realize that even without knowing him, she cared for him. She felt the same pure love for the leopard she had felt for Jimmy on the night they first met. Khan stood over Martin with his huge paws on either side of her body. She knew he would kill her. He roared angrily. She then remembered Ben telling her, Shout and we will come running if you confront Khan. But she knew that she would be uh, dead before Ben arrived and Khan, Khan too would be killed by the guide. Here she remembers the times she was saved from a deadly attack. Once it was when she tried to rescue Jimmy her giraffe from a Rottweiler dog and other time when a great white shark was eating an American tourist. But there in the cave she was so frightened and couldn't do anything to escape from Khan. When she lay there she could sense sadness in his yellow eyes rather than hatred as he was exhausted, exhausted by the struggle to survive. Now she feels pity for the leopard as she could sense the feelings of the leopard.
Please don't hurt me, she said to Khan. All I want to do is to help you. The leopard roared. She recognized it as the defiant, rage-filled sound she had heard on the first night at the Black Eagle. At close quarters, it was blood-curdling. There was a drumbeat echo of footsteps as Ben and Negwenia returned at speed. Martin wasn't sure which she feared most, that Khan would kill her before they could reach her, or that they would reach her in time but shoot him to save her. She was about to close her eyes and pray that the end, whether it was the leopard's or her own, was quick. When some of the wilder, while some of the wildness seemed to leave Khan, he gave her a last unfathomable look before melting away into the bush. Martin scrambled to her feet and dusted herself off. Ben burst out of the tunnel, mouth first. Martin, Martin, oh, thank God you are okay. Did you hear that roar? It nearly frightened the life out of us. We should never have left you. I don't know what I was thinking. It just seemed the safest thing to do. Martin pleaded Khan not to hurt her. She said that she wanted to help her. The leopard roared loudly. By hearing the sound, Ben and Venya reached towards the cave, rushed towards the cave. Martin feared that they would kill Khan. She didn't want that to but Khan just looked at her and vanished into the bush. And when Ben arrived, he regretted for leaving Martin alone. Ben uh, burst out of the tunnel, mouth first. Martin, Martin, oh thank God you are okay. Did you hear that roar? It nearly frightened the life out of us. We should never have left you. I don't know what I was thinking. It just seemed the safest thing to do. He suddenly became aware that Martin wasn't saying anything. Then he noticed the red specks on her t-shirt. Is that blood? It was on the tip of Martin's tongue to tell him about Khan. But then Venya came rushing over and wanted them to leave right away, in case Khan was still around. And Martin realized that there was no way of putting into words what had just taken place. How could she say that the leopard which had eluded rangers who had worked in Metapos for 20 years had knocked her to the ground and stood over her with the clear intention of killing her. But that something had passed between them, an understanding, and at the last second he had changed his mind. How could she explain that she had looked into his blazing yellow eyes and seen beyond the hatred to the weary sadness of a creature hunted almost every day of his existence? How could she explain that without even knowing him, she loved him? I am fine, she replied. I slipped on a rock, that's all. I did hear the roar and I was a bit scared, but I knew you were close by. I knew you would come running if I needed you, and you did. So here, when Ben arrived, he regretted for her leaving Martin alone. When he realized that Martin wasn't saying anything and when he noticed red specks on her t-shirt, he asked her if it was blood. Martin was about to say that she had confronted Khan but immediately Venya came rushing and wanted them to leave the cave right away. Martin feared that if she said about what she had seen, they would search for Khan and kill him. She didn't want that to happen because she loved him. So she just said that she had just slipped from a rock when she heard the roar of Khan. We have the word meanings here. Ledge means a narrow shelf of rock on the side of a mountain. Topaz means a yellow brown precious stone. Unquenchable means cannot be stopped. 
snarls means growls loathing means feeling of very strong hatred born deep means very deeply felt blood curdling extremely frightening and fathomable incapable of being understood